Welcome. Sorry, we're getting ready right now and still changing the title, but I we will okay. be reading Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Whoop. It's just always one of those books. Actually, here's why initially I ever read the book, and I actually remember this. There was an old video game called World of Amen back for the Apple IIe, right, when I was a kid? Yeah. And uh, it had... In the, in the game, you could find a copy of How to Win Friends and Influence People. And if you read it, uh, your charisma went up by one. Oh. So it had made it that far into like popular culture that it was in a weird dungeon crawling video, like text-based dungeon crawling video game. So huh. that first brought me, that's the first time I went to it, okay? So, you know, automatically if it's framed in that way, I'm interested. I'm like, oh, you find this in a dungeon? Well, let me, you know, let me check this out. So I like read it in my 20s at some point. I was like, oh, okay. wait a minute. The thing from the game was, was an act. They made it into a book. <laughs> Didn't apply any of the lessons at all. No? No, I don't really? think so. Or did you I don't even think like so. subconsciously? Maybe subconsciously. I don't know because it didn't seem like I, when going back and reading it, it didn't feel like I was doing the. Didn't you have friends in your 20s though? Oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. We're trying Probably to get socializing. the hang of. Knowing how to socialize again, and we're not. I, just, I read a statistic recently mm. that yeah, right. The average American has not made a new friend in the last five years. Isn't that crazy? I don't know how true that, but it seems it's some like study. It's some Maybe study it's some sort somewhere. of. Uh... It could be a bunch of bullshit, except for the fact that it's obviously echoing something that a lot of people are feeling. You know, me and Loren are the kind of people that have always, you know, worked on skills and stuff, and always thought that like. Worrying about the social aspect was kind of like diluting the what the you know, pureness purity of our of the like research art or something. And... Yeah, whatever. Better to plant a tree twenty years ago, right? Yes, that's true. The second best time is now. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here we so go. So here's what we're gonna do. Yep. Yeah. Um, we're gonna read. I'm gonna. We're gonna switch off. Page Basically by page. every page. We might kind of paraphrase some of the stuff. If, uh, yeah, it's casual. But we'll stop when we're interested or if someone, you know, out there is interested in a thing, go ahead and, you know, comment up or whatever. And we'll just stop we'll kind of maybe every, about it. you know, section and discuss mm -hmm. it. Fucking Dale Carnegie. Here you go, buddy. His voice echoes across the ages. How this book was written and why. I realize that as sorely as these adults needed training in effective speaking, they needed still more training in the fine art of getting along with people. Oh, and in everyday business and social contacts. Oh, ouch. Oh, called that hurts, out. Dude. I am definitely feeling oh. called out right now. Oof. Thanks, Dale. Dude, Dale. Like, seriously. Ouch. <laughs> he, like, spanked me across the ages. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Thanks, Dale. Mm -hmm. oh. We're well, going to take this pause. Where Dale actually called us out and emotionally hurt me. Um, we're going to go ahead and take this pause to check the, the sound. And now you don't have to stress because we're going to take the video, edit it, and that stuff will all be gone. Except what's good for the story. The story. A fact later confirmed by additional studies made at the Carnegie Institute. He's of teasing us with the fact. Now, this is some 30s stuff right here. He's it's just like, name dropping his institute. He's just teasing. Over like, and over we his found things. this fact at the fucking institute. It's one of the institute most prestigious of technology. Institute. That even in such technical lines as engineering, about 15% of one's financial success is due to one's technical knowledge and about 85%. Yeah. is due to skill in human engineering I've, I've heard to personality say. and the ability to lead people oof man we, we just focused on the wrong thing the highest paid personnel in engineering are frequently not those who know the most about engineering <laughs> no who what? are they <laughs> john d rockefeller said that the the ability to deal with people is as purchasable a commodity as sugar or coffee and I will pay more for that ability, said John D. than for any other under the sun. That was a little bit of American Psycho vibe, though, right? I think this whole thing has a little bit of American Psycho vibe. L the name dropping weird... part, kind of, yeah. yeah. The world, I guess. Mm -hmm. The world he lives in, yeah, isn't the world like everyone lives in. But I think what he's saying is still true. University of Chicago and the United YMCA schools conducted a survey to determine what adults want to study. The survey cost $25,000 <laughs> and no. took two years. I'm just saying that sometimes... How did they fund a two-year study for $25,000? Wow, that, that was a long time ago. Hobbies or ambitions or problems. What subjects are you most interested in studying and so on? 
Exhaustive. It's an exhaustive survey. That survey revealed that the health is the prime interest of adults and that their second interest is how people, is people, is how people, is how people, is how people, how to understand and get along with people, how to make people like you and how to win others to your way of thinking. They searched diligently for a practical textbook on the subject and found not one. Finally, they approached one of the world's outstanding authorities on adult education and asked him if he knew of any book that met the needs of this group. No, he replied. I know what those adults want, but the book they need has never been written. I knew from experience that this statement was true, for I myself have been searching for years to discover a practical working handbook on human relations. Good points, but also there's some snake oil, like, I feel like a turn-of-the-century barker telling us right. about the, the uh, what do you call them, like the benefits that this Alembic will make to your mm -hmm. joints here's the other the only part of it that makes me pause and like still be like okay maybe there's still something here is the fact that even today really that wasn't taught to us like maybe even now the whole reason this book is even still around is that no one still has really done it since no such book existed i've tried to write one for use in my own courses and here it is i hope you like it thanks dale in preparation for this book, I hired a trained researcher to spend one and a half years in various libraries reading everything I'd missed, plowing through erudite tomes on psychology. Nobody wow. speaks like that except for me. Wow. Going through countless biographies, trying to ascertain how the great leaders of all ages had dealt with people. Yeah. Life stories of all great leaders from Julius Caesar to Thomas Edison. I recall that we read over 100 biographies of Theodore Roosevelt alone. <laughs> what? So he was a pretty big deal back in the 1930s in America. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. We were determined to spare no time, no expense to discover every practical idea that anyone had ever used throughout the ages for winning friends and influencing people. Movie stars like oh, yeah, Clark Gable guy. and Mary Pickford. Explorers oh, yeah, yeah. like Martin Johnson. Oh yeah, Martin. Tried to, good old Marty. <laughs> From all this material, I prepared a short talk. I called it, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I gave the talk and urged the listeners to go out and test it in their business and social contacts and then come back to class and speak about their experiences and results they had achieved. The first and only laboratory of human relationships for adults that had ever existed. Well, now we do have other laboratories. We have other laboratories. Nowadays. I'm going to yeah. submit like... Twitter. Just Twitch. Right? Big Brother. Big Brother, there you go. Like it's an interesting like, social that's laboratory. That's sort of a weird social laboratory, yeah. So it has changed since then. That really has changed. Right. So this really was a book, like, I guess at the time, like, no one had ever really thought of even teaching this stuff or that it was a skill. And I guess maybe that is I think it was thought part of, of the revelation that's happening rather here. than a learnable skill. Yeah, people maybe. thought you were either naturally sociable or not, maybe. But I think that what he's saying is that's not necessarily the case. After 15 years of experiment and research came this book. The rules we have set down here are not mere theories or guesswork. They work like magic. Yes. I've seen the application of these principles literally revolutionize the lives of many people. <laughs> when I used to walk through my establishment, no one greeted me. My employees actually looked the other way when they saw me approaching. But now, they're all my friends. And even the janitor calls me by my first name. Even the janitor. Magical. On innumerable occasions, spouses attending the banquet given at the end of the course have told me that their homes have been much happier since their husbands are... Oh no, Koa! Oh, poor sweetie. She was locked downstairs. She, she, she's better now. Their husbands or wives started this training. Not People, bad. I mean, that sounds great. It's, I'm just wondering why you have to sell it so hard. Will it seem like magic? Now you've set it up where it's going to have to. It has to seem like, like magic. Like whatever we now. apply now is going to have to seem like a magical experience. And maybe that's true. Let's just say maybe he goes through like three or four people who got really excited. So we just want to kind of scan and final kind of summation here. If by the time you finish reading the first three chapters of this book, if you aren't a little better equipped to meet life situations, then I shall consider this book to be a total failure so far as you are concerned. For the great aim of education, said Herbert Spencer, is not knowledge, but action. And this is an action book. I like that. Okay. Maybe he could I, have I'm stopped with I'm looking for actionable uh, things. In the first three chapters, we need to notice a difference in our lives. It's kind of like with the, you know, calorie counting or something. You know, at first, apparently, 
what he's saying is at first you might not notice or whatever, but like magic. You if know, you're applying these things, then three chapters in is enough for you to see a difference. You know, is this actually worthwhile? We'll apply those and see if I feel this magical feeling. Right. It is kind of a revelation. He did call us out already. You want to read nine suggestions on how to get yeah, the most out of this book? Yeah, let's do at least this part. So, yeah, going forward, we just read the prologue. He said, which was called Why... What Why he call wrote it? the book. Why I wrote this book. And man. I mean, he wrote it basically because he, he realized a need for it. That people didn't really know how to deal with personality. People were really bad at dealing with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and actually, that's still true. And it doesn't seem like there's many that's courses on it. Like college courses on it. We don't really deal with it regularly. Yeah, right. or deal with it head on. How to make friends. And influence people. Right. Nine suggestions. It's just the screen went dark. Mm -hmm. We're just like apparently like technology, right? Yeah. If you wish to get the most out of this book, number one, there's one indispensable requirement. One essential, infinitely more important than any rule to te technique. Unless you have this one fundamental requisite. A thousand rules on how to study will avail little. Oh, this is almost biblical. And if you do have this cardinal endowment, then you can achieve wonders without reading any suggestions for getting the most out of this book. What is the magic requirement? What is it, everyone? Just this, a deep driving desire to learn, a vigorous determination to increase your ability to deal with people. So you have to really want it, is what yeah. he's saying, I guess. Okay. Just How desire. Can you... Wow. My popularity, my happiness, and sense of worth depend to no small extent upon my skill in dealing with people. This is completely opposite of everything I grew up with. What do you mean on that number one? Just, it's tough for me because I was always like, you shouldn't care what other people think. Right, and no, I know. Live your own life and don't worry about others. And A lot of our media was even it, like that. You know, from the time I was very young, that was really driven in. Was that for you as well? Oh, yeah. Even like reading stuff. I think a lot of that attitude also came from like, remember like Ann Rand or whatever, like Fountainhead, where it was kind of like, Sometimes you've got to, like, do your own thing and, like... And go against the grain. Go against the crowd because the crowd's a bunch of stupid dummies or whatever, right? I think being able to do that is great, but I just only did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's I a, that's an issue. Part, yeah, you know? we kind of missed a whole part, really. The right. wanting people to like you part. The wanting well, people not to... for like Not for, like, yourself even, but, like, just for instance and just your you know, financial health or whatever. Right. Like if you don't have people that you talk to, then you don't get like job Realizing it's and... a fulfilling thing. It's yeah. been like money, honestly. Oh my God. I know. I know. We're so dumb. We're kind of dumb. We should have been thinking about this stuff. Oh. Read each chapter rapidly. Oh, you get to do that one. Sorry. Oh no, no, you do it. Oh, read. This is number two. Read each chapter rapidly at first to get a bird's eye view of it. You'll probably be tempted then to rush on to the next one. Well, we're not rushing anywhere in this one. But don't, unless you're reading merely for entertainment. But if you're reading because you want to increase your skill in human relations, go back and reread each chapter thoroughly. In the long run, this will mean saving time and getting results. I think we're kind of doing that in a sense. It'll be different, but we're doing the stream and reading it. And then we're going to go back and edit the video. Yeah, so we're going to see this stuff like twice. So we'll, we'll take a second look at it too. It won't be exactly how he had planned, mm -hmm, but we mm -hmm. will do it. Uh, three. Stop frequently in your reading to think over what you're reading. Okay, we're doing that. Yeah. Right, we're doing that. I think so. Ask yourself just how and when you can apply each suggestion. I actually think this might be a great format for it. Yeah, okay, this is actually working out without us really even thinking about it. Right. Read with a crayon, pencil, pen, magic marker, or highlighter in your hand. When you come across a suggestion you feel you can use, draw a line beside it. We're obviously not doing that, but I think we're recording it, so... Once again, I think yeah, that takes care of that part. We're not drawing a line. Part. We're not drawing a line, but that's... It's a digital copy. If anyway. we're need, if we going to put a line under it, then we'll have that quote in the video. Okay. We'll make sure to retain that. Yeah, okay. That's how we underline something, right? Sure. That makes sense. Um, uh, number five. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go again. Here's Dale again. Because Dale can't... Classic Dale. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. I knew a woman <laughs> who had been an office manager for a large insurance concern month after month year after year. I once spent almost two years writing a book on public speak, but I had to keep going back over it. The rapidity with which we forget is astonishing. Yeah. 
Don't imagine that skimming through it once will suffice. Wow, this is number six, everyone. Bernard Shaw once remarked, if you teach a man anything, he will never learn. Okay. Shaw was right. Learning is an active process. We learn by doing. So if you desire to master the principles you're studying in this book, do something about them. Apply these rules at every opportunity. If you don't, you will forget them quickly. Only knowledge that is used sticks in your mind. All right, well, that's, that's actually valid. That's totally true. You'll probably find it difficult to apply these suggestions all the time. I know because I wrote the book. What an ass. For example, when you're displeased, it's much easier to criticize and condemn than to try to understand the other people's viewpoint. You're attempting to form new habits. Ah, okay. uh, yes, you're attempting a new way of life. This will require time and persistence and daily application. Okay, I think this... The streaming is going to kind of keep us in the persistent application aspect of it. Yes. And then we're going to see, because he does basically promise, you know, three chapters and we're going to start seeing some fucking magic shit. Hesitate about doing the natural thing. The impulsive thing. Okay. This is usually wrong. Oh. Mm. I've seen that. Instead, turn to these pages and review the paragraphs you have underscored. Then... Try these new ways and watch them achieve magic for you. Fuck yeah. Magical. He is the mad. There's a lot of magic talk, though. I'm surprised at how much magic talk. This is great, though. I mean, but like. We, we just have a few more rules. Just oh, more Jesus. Rules All right. Okay. Keep going with the rules. We got it. It's a lot of. I'm not good at rule following, though. And we got like 10. Did he do 10 commandments or is nine? nine? He did nine. So some humility there, Dale. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Um, rule seven, offer your spouse, your child, or some business associate a dime or a dollar every time he or she catches you violating a certain mm. principle. Make a lively game out of mastering these rules. Ooh, Maybe in some way on stream we can do some sort of stream game for if we... Where if you're rule. called out if you bust one of the rules, right? Yeah. We'll think about that later. We will ponder that. Um, number eight, <laughs> the president... Of an important Wall Street bank once described in a talk before one of my classes. A highly efficient system he used for self-improvement. This man had little formal schooling, yet he had become one of the most important financiers in America, and he confessed that he owed most of his success to the constant application of his homemade system. This is what he does. I'll put it in his words as accurately as I can remember. I went off by myself, opened my engagement book, and thought, what mistakes did I make that time? What did I do that was right, and in what way could I have improved my performance? What lessons can I learn from that experience? I often found that this weekly review made me very unhappy, astonished at my own blunders. Dude, year after year, did more for me than any other one thing I've ever attempted. Hmm. Uh, oh, he, he keeps going. Oh. Aided me enormously in all my contacts with people. Your system to check up on your application of the principles discussed in this book. Two things will result. First, you'll find yourself engaged in an educational process that's both intriguing and priceless. Second, you will find that your ability to meet and deal with people will grow enormously. I know it also grew enormously. <laughs> anyway, the guy... Um... There was a weird, I just have to say in that particular story, there was that weird, like, my family knows they won't bother me on Saturday. I lock you myself bother up. Me. And I, I, I swear to God, if they, if they come in while I'm doing time. my shit, I will, I will whip them. You know, he doesn't say that, but I'm just saying it's like, wow. <laughs> it has that vibe though. Like he's had to scold them, maybe make the child go without dinner for bothering him on Saturday or something. You know what I mean? Like some shit happened. Yeah. I tell my goddamn family they are not to disturb me. This is like that when baker, I'm in my office. You know the the Mary Poppins, the dad in Mary Poppins. Right. I, this is who I'm picturing. Okay. He's like the bowler hat, and he's very stern, and mm -hmm. the children shall not disturb him, and all that. Don't disturb me while I'm working, children. Right. I'm reflecting upon my day. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Okay. Okay, daddy. This is rule number nine, the final one. You will find at the end of this book several blank pages on which you should record your triumphs in the application of these principles. Read each chapter twice before going to the next one. I mean, no can do, bro. Okay, sort of twice. Like our, our whole method of doing this, yeah. recording it and making videos, kind of accidentally ends up following all of his rules. So without us better. having to, you know, like journal or whatever. Thank goodness. Uh, underscore each important idea. Review this book each month. 
can go back and watch our YouTube video. Apply these principles at every opportunity. Use this volume as a working handbook to help you solve your daily problems. Okay. G, make a lively game out of your learning. Well, that is gamifying isn't a bad idea either. Yeah. I'm going to think about that we'll here. By offering ways. some friend a dime or dollar, we're not, obviously, No, we but we could do money. some stream game where we have right. to, like, wear a silly outfit if we have violated Every a time he catches something. you violating a principle. Right. It's like I violated a principle. Okay. What school, Sean? So, H and I. Check up again. All right. The, you know what? That's But this is showing me in this part um, is that actually a lot of those rules could be sunk into one rule which is like just you know document in some way your progress document and analyze your progress um, well, i guess that's probably it for today yeah i think tomorrow we'll come back with part one of chapter one which is uh fundamental techniques in handling people so the actual beginning of the actual book it's more just like hanging out when we're doing the stream right, the stream's just, hanging out video a little bit It'll be it'll be structured yeah, around just the whatever. yeah right. To my first impression, I'll give you my first impression so far okay. is that there's stuff here that's actually useful. Yes. There's also a lot of just the the name dropping and there's a lot of puff. Yeah. There's a lot of sort of snake oil salesmanish parts to it too, which right, which is kind of weird. But also, that's kind of the way things. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off judgment. I think I remember reading it and actually finding value in it. Right. I honestly, he could sound whatever way he wants, and as long as it works for me, mm -hmm. that's what I care about. It was still super American Psycho, right? Just yeah. I'm surprised he wasn't talking about restaurants, honestly. But it was business always cards. like <laughs> business cards or whatever. Yeah. One of my uh, executives used to have terrible business cards. <laughs> he was you just know. a useless dirtbag before he took my class. Mm -hmm. And then he applied the principle. Mm -hmm. Like magic. This Magical. guy was transformed into a social butterfly who was fucking killing it. Making money. You well, could. hopefully that guy's us next. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, and whether or not, you know, after three chapters we're noticing a difference or not. So what, right? We've still learned and tried. We could maybe try what a different book. What have we lost? Book, nothing. Know? Come from nothing? You return to nothing. What have you lost? Nothing! nothing. <laughs> <laughs>